In this lesson, we are going to look at all the analytical geometry from grade 10. The first thing we're going to start off with is the distance formula. And as the name suggests, we use this formula to determine the distance between two points. So let's use an example. Here we've got point A and point B. So I'm going to let point A be my second point, and I'm going to let B be equal to my first point. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, as long as once you've made your decision, you stick to that. So what we could do is we can say AB, that means the distance of AB will be equal to, then I can put my two brackets, and then X2, so that means the X value of point number two, which would be this one. So we say two minus, then the X value of point number one, which is minus four. So what I do is I write minus four. Like that, you see, so I've got two minuses there. Yes, we all know that that becomes a positive, but what I actually do is I just type it on my calculator exactly like this, and I let the calculator take care of all these basics. Because as humans, we can make mistakes. Then I fill in my next point, and now I mustn't switch the values around. For example, it says that I must use the Y value of point two. So I must go to point two, which is negative three, then I put a minus, and then the y value of point 0.1 is minus 7. So I write in minus 7. I then take my calculator and I type it in exactly like that. If you do this correctly, it should give you 2 square root 13, but to two decimal places, that'll be 7.21. The next formula we're going to look at is the midpoint formula. Now let's say, for example, we have two points, A and B. The midpoint formula finds the point that is exactly in the middle, which would be somewhere over there. Now the formula that we use is shown to you over here, and so we can quickly try an example using these coordinates. Once again, you always need to make the choice as to which is point two and which is point one. I'm just gonna do it like that. And then is minus four plus the x value of point number two, which is two over two. Then I do the y values, so the y values are going to be minus 7 plus minus 3. Notice how I put the positive and the negative next to each other. It doesn't matter because the calculator knows how to handle that. And then over 2. So then what you do is you type in this part on the calculator, which would be negative 1. And then you do the other one, and that would be negative 5. So what that means is that the midpoint would have the coordinates negative 1 and negative 5. I would like to quickly show you the midpoint formula in reverse. They tell us here that point C is the midpoint of AB. Our goal is to find X and Y. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this part first. This is for the X values. So we know that let's call this point 1 and let's call this point 2. And let's fill in whatever we can. So we can say 4 plus, because I'm just following this formula now, now the x value at point 2 is x. So I'm just going to put x over 2, but now I know the answer. The answer to my x midpoint is 9, so I can say 9 like that. Then it's just a matter of solving. So I multiply the 2 over, so then we have 4 plus x equals to 18, and you would find that x is 14. Now I can do the y values, so now I'm using this part. So it says that I must take the y value of the first one, minus 3, plus the y value of the second one, 7, divided by 2, and that should give me our answer, which is y. Now if you had to go work that out, you would get an answer of 2. The next formula we're going to talk about is the gradient formula. The gradient formula tells us how steep a line is. For example, Line AB is steeper than line CD. So we will say that line AB has a larger gradient than line CD. Lines that go in this direction are positive. We can see that they are going in this direction. You see they're going upwards. And then lines that go downwards like this, these are negative. They have a negative gradient. What we're now going to do is we're going to work out the gradient between points A and B using the formula. 
Now, please remember that it does not matter which point is point number one and which point is point number two. You can choose whatever you like. I'm going to do it like that. So what it says is that we take the y value of point number two. So the y value of point number two is negative three. So I'm going to say negative three. Then there's a negative. So I put a negative. Then this is also a negative. So I say negative seven. The calculator will take care of all of that. Then the y value at point two is two minus and then the y value. I mean the x value at point one. Sorry, I might have said the y value at point two over there. I mean the x value is negative four. Now, if you do this correctly, your answer would be 2 over 3. There are some things that students do which often causes the answer to be incorrect. I'll quickly show you what students often do. So, one of the ways that you can make a mistake is you do the following. You go minus 3, minus minus 7. Now, that's all okay. And then what you do is you go divide 2 minus minus 4. Now, guys, that is completely wrong. Uh, the reason is is due to bod mass. The calculator is actually going to do the 7 divided by 2 first. So if you want to do this method, then what you need to do is put brackets around both parts. So it would have to go something like this. Okay, and then you'd get 2 out of 3. The better option though is to just write it as a fraction and then you can do it like that. Then you don't need any brackets. So you can see that we'll get the correct answer. The next thing we're going to talk about is parallel and perpendicular lines. The three lines that I've drawn are parallel. The way that we would, could show that is like this. And what's important about parallel lines is that they have the same gradient. So we could say that their gradient, which we show with a small letter, 1, would be the same as the gradient of number 2, which would be the same as the gradient of number 3. These two lines over here are perpendicular. Specifically, they are perpendicular when they form an angle of 90 degrees with each other. Mathematically, when two lines have the same, sorry, not the same, when they are perpendicular, then when you multiply their gradients, it will always equal minus 1. So specifically, we can say that the gradient of number 1 multiplied by the gradient of number 2 will always give you minus 1. That is the definition of perpendicular lines. So just to recap, the ones on the left are parallel and these on the right are perpendicular. Here's a question. They tell us that AB is parallel, so that should instantly make us remember that they have the same gradient. Then it says determine Y. So what we do is we take AB and we work out its gradient. So I'm going to call this point number one and this point number two, and I'm going to use the gradient formula. So that'll be minus seven minus, and then there's a minus three over minus four minus two. And this will give us two over three. So this means that the gradient of AB is two over three, but that also means that the gradient of BC is two over three. So we can say that the gradient of BC is equal to two over three. Now, how would we calculate the gradient of BC? Well, we would use this formula again. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this point number 2 and this point number 1. And so it says that the y value of point number 2, well, that is just a y. So I'm just going to fill in a y minus the y value of point 1 is minus 7 over 3 minus minus 4. You see, now we can work backwards. So what I would do is I would keep it as y, that would become y plus 7, and then at the bottom you could type it in the calculator and that would give you 7. What I like to do in these moments is just get a common denominator, which would be 21. So I'm going to multiply this by 3, and I'm going to multiply this one by 7. And remember, you have to multiply the top as well. So we're going to end up multiplying this by 7, so it'll be 7 times 2, equals 2, and then we're going to multiply all of this by 3. So I'm going to do that. And then I don't have to keep the denominator because it's an equation. So then 14 is equal to 3y plus 21. If you had to work this all out, you'd find that y is negative 7 over 3. In this question, they tell us that AB is perpendicular to BC, determine y. So remember, perpendicular means that when you multiply the two gradients together, it should always equal minus 1. 
this minus 1 is like a magic number in perpendicular lines. It will always be minus 1 if the lines are perpendicular. So what we do is we know the gradient of AB because these are the numbers I used in the previous example. If you remember we got 2 over 3. So that's the gradient of AB. So we can say that that's, so what we can do is we can say that the gradient of AB multiplied by the gradient of BC should be minus 1 because they told us that it's perpendicular. Now we know the gradient of AB is 2 thirds so then we can solve for the gradient of BC. If you have to go work this out, you would find that the gradient of BC is negative 3 over 2. So now what we can do is we can take BC and we can do the gradient formula. I'm going to call B point number 1 and I'm going to call C point number 2. I'm then going to fill in the gradient formula, so it's going to be Y minus minus 7 over 3 minus minus 4. And the answer should be negative 3 over 2. I would then simplify, so these two negatives become a positive, so I'm just going to write it all up here, so it'll become y plus 7, 3 minus minus 4 just becomes 7, and that's going to be negative 3 over 2. The common denominator here is 14, so we're going to multiply this one by a 7, and we're going to multiply this by a 2, and so that's going to become 2 bracket y plus 7 equals to minus 3 times 7. Then this part is easy, 2y plus 14 equals to negative 21. And so solving that, you're going to get negative 17.5. The last topic we're going to talk about is straight lines. So the straight line equation, if you guys can remember, is y equals to mx plus c. Remember that? So m was always the gradient, which we now know how to calculate, and c is the y intercept. So here we can work out the equation of the line AB. So we know that it's a straight line and so we can say y equals to mx plus c. m is the gradient and your gradient formula as we've looked at previously is this. So I'm going to just call this point 1 and I'm going to call this point 2. Fill everything in. So that's minus 7 minus minus 3 over minus 4 minus 2 and that's going to give us a gradient of 2 thirds. So what I then do is I fill that in the place of m because m is the gradient. Then to find c you need to plug in a point and it can be any point. You can choose a or you can choose b. I'm going to choose point a. So what I do is I put the x value as 2 and the y value as minus 3 so it would look like this. So can you see what I did there? I put the y's and the x's into the equation. What I now do is I try solve for c. If you do this, you would find that the value of c is negative 13 over 3. Therefore, the equation of this line is y equals to 2 over 3x minus 13 over 3. All right, guys, I hope you are still focusing. We are nearly done. So here it says, determine the equation of a line which is parallel did someone just remember? Parallel, same gradient. And it passes through this point. So we're looking for the equation of a line. So what we do is we write out the equation of the line formula, which is like that. Now, we're looking for a line which is parallel to this line. But now, because they've said parallel, it means that the two lines have the same gradient. So this line's gradient is 3, so it means that our line's gradient will also be 3. So we can say y equals to 3x plus c. We mustn't say plus 4 because then it's the same line. They, they are parallel, so they have the same gradient. Then to find c, we plug in a point, and luckily they've given us that point. So the 2 goes in the place of y, and the minus 4 goes in the place of x. And so you would work out c as 14. Therefore, y is equal to 3x plus 14. And that's it for grade 10 revision of analytical geometry.